Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, listen, everybody, it's the Ramble, and I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, we're here until, uh, let's see here, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, but uh, it is uh, it is a Wednesday, and every uh, we, we love... We love to talk to this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it is the music of Larry Bubbles Brown and his orchestra. <laughs> his all-girl, Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra. Oh, you remember Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra, huh? I don't remember. I remember somebody telling me that. Oh, and yeah. I thought it was yeah. the funniest thing I'd ever heard of. I don't know who he was. But know, I guess he's some guy in the it, 30s it, it, or 40s. It was a band that made the assumption that people would want to see an all-girl orchestra because nobody thought women could play instruments, you know, and that it was funny to see a, a, a woman playing an accordion, you know. So uh, he had Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra. <laughs> Only you would know that. <laughs> now, uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to be sexist about this, but I do know a fact about women's biology, and that if they hang out together, they get their periods in synchronization. Have you heard that one? I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what happened when this whole band went into <laughs> <laughs> into their monthlies. That's, that's one bus you didn't want to be on. <laughs> that's one bus you didn't want to catch, right? But uh, Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra. I can't think. Were there any other all-girl things? They have, like, all-girl basketball teams and all-girl. Well, they had the all-girl baseball teams during World War II. Yeah. Because there were no guys to play. Own, but uh, was, it, was his band good? Or they, could they actually play? I don't remember. Uh, my father was a musician, and he used to tell you when there was a good band or a bad band. And I can't remember what he said about Phil Spitalny. It seems uh, like kind of a cool idea, actually. Well, if you want to get laid, uh, <laughs> you know, because in those days you could have a casting couch, and I bet Phil Spitalny had one. Uh, you want to be in the band? Good, blow me. You know, I mean, oh, blow good. me like you blow that oboe, <laughs> like that tuba. Too play me, play me like, uh, give, give me a rusty trombone. <laughs> play, play, fly to the bumblebee. Uh, is this? Is this? Is this? bit we're doing is this wrong it's probably uh yes we'll be censored by the me too uh, movement. the me too movement yeah yeah uh, but like you said the casting couch was just i think that was just accepted you uh, knew uh, that going in it, the, 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 you always talked about the casting couch ever since i started in show business i heard about the casting couch now you know, I didn't. That's not to say that I approved of the concept. I just knew that it existed, and that you know, some women were being asked to perform sexual acts in order to get the jobs they had. Um, I mean, quite frankly, uh, if uh, Harvey Weinstein, I had sex with Harvey Weinstein, I wouldn't let the world know about it. Uh, no. Especially if I maybe won an Academy Award for doing it. Uh, so you know, I mean, uh, the 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 big the bigger question is, uh, uh, you, you know, I mean, how, how many of these the people probably shouldn't have said anything because they did kind of succumb to the casting couch in order to get a part or to get in good graces. Um, I I do think that you know Weinstein is a basic major creep. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I think it is a sexual abuse to even have to fuck Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Look at him, you know. I mean, but uh, uh, I just, you know, I just, it, it was also such a known in Hollywood. Hell, it's like my friend Shecky said to me, he said, I even knew it. You they know? were they ruined jokes about it on old awards show. <laughs> yes, yes. Who was it? Did the joke? Um, I can't remember. 
Um, yeah, was, I know. I can't remember either, but they just uh, they was, was were it si- open, they were so open about it. It was just like was it Seinfeld? It wasn't Se- Seinfeld. It was uh, some, but it was when they were giving out the Oscars, the nominations, and the guy said something about uh, not one of these women had to sleep with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, or yeah, something like that. That and and that was before the whole Me Too thing and the whole thing came out and so on. It was just like known in Hollywood that that's what Harvey did. And in his office, it wasn't like they were permitting it. They just went, oh, that's Harvey. You know, mm-hmm. that's what Harvey does. You know, and and um, all of a sudden one day the rules change, and now Harvey, of course, is 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 out of work, and you know everybody's tr- scrambling for cover. But uh, he was really, um, uh, you know, everybody knew what he was doing, and it went on for it went on for years and years and years, and. Uh, you know, I would imagine there were those who didn't want to and who were forced kind of uh, uh, sexually. But I think there were also those that did it willingly because they thought there would be something in it for their career. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now I'm ask, I have to ask the question, and that is, yes, he used his power to get laid. But to those women who willingly had sex with this disgusting human being, to get a part, what do we say about them? You know, I mean, the fact that they didn't say no shows to me a certain lack of bravery. Yeah. You know, so I can't, I can't admire them. I can feel sorry no, for no. them, but I can't admire them. Exactly. And, and by, by uh, acceding to his wishes and by attempting to get the part because you know, it was Harvey Weinstein. Uh, you only enabled the behavior to keep going on. So, you know, yeah, finally a bunch of women said, that's it, no more, and it stopped. And that's what it would have taken back then. But there were women still willing to sleep with this slovenly pig uh, <laughs> uh, for, for a part. And so were they not enablers? Is the question, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, because he knew he he can he get away with it. Obviously, for years he did. He can't now, but um, it's all in retrospect. We knew about the, we knew about Cosby for years. This the Cosby thing went on, yeah, and for years people knew about it in the business. Yet nothing was ever done about it, uh, you know. And so I'm asking, like, who's guilty here, you know? I think it's the people that kept their mouths shut. I think it's the people who who thought this kind of behavior was was okay, or oh, that's just Harvey, or oh, that's just Bill, you know. Um, so uh, it, it 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 it's. I think there are a lot of people to blame, and some of them are the people who enabled it. Definitely, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. and. Uh... You can only imagine, like, an early Hollywood with no social media or anything. <laughs> Those guys must have literally gotten away with murder. Well, I mean, social media has, has certainly changed everything, you know, um, because, you know, it, it's not only started a whole movement like the Me Too movement, but it also has... Uh, uh, Oh, gotten people in trouble, and it's also gotten people elected. You know, so uh, it's it's um, it's it's kind of sad. You know, yeah. The downside it's also gotten people convicted without a trial. Also, well, I always found that kind of behavior that Harvey Weinstein was engaged in to be absolutely deplorable. You know, even before it was in vogue for it to be deplorable, I just found it. I found it tasteless. I found I always didn't like the way men that I would hang out with would talk about women. You know, I don't know if you ever felt that way, but, you know, when you get together with guys and they go, hey, look at the jugs on that chick, you know. That. <laughs> and you go to yourself, well, is that really right? You know? And I would sometimes chastise the people I was with and say, it's not right to say, and they would all give me a bad time about it. You know? Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, ju- I just found it wrong. I found mm-hmm. it. Uh, I I I I put myself in the position of being that woman with the exceptionally big jugs, 
and, and, and having to hear this all the time. And also have people believe I was stupid or something because I had big jugs. You know, so it, it, I, I always hated it. You were a feminist. Excuse me, folks. I guess I wasn't being a feminist when I called them jugs, okay? <laughs> so, so you can blow me. No, but I, I always found that behavior on the part of guys wrong. I didn't like that, that fraternity that men have with each other, you know? And yeah, I, well, I, I think, yeah, like George Carlin said, anytime people get into groups, they're dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's correct. You see, I think, yeah, I think it's so, right on. He said, uh, people, individually, people are fine. They get together when they're in groups, they're dangerous. My, well, my friend uh, Jack Garfine, uh, the director who survived 11 concentration camps, has constantly said to me, repeatedly, he says, I hate the human race. The human race as a whole are terrible. He said, yeah, he's right. He said it's individuals that are wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, he said there were individuals when I was in the camps who, who who helped save my life, and they were wonderful. But the people who had me in those camps were a group. You know, mm -hmm. they were the Nazis. They were they were humanity. And uh, you know, and I I tend to agree with him. You know, the human race is deplorable as a whole. Uh, they really but, are. But individually, you have these people who are, are beacons of light. Am I surprised that there's a Harvey Weinstein uh, in this world? No, I'm not surprised. Bill Cosby? No, I'm not surprised. I am surprised when I find somebody who's really good and really nice and really wonderful and, and treats uh, the people around him with great respect. Then I'm surprised. I'm not going to laud it because that's the way they should be acting. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so that's you know. So, uh, Bob's uh, anything anything uh, happening career-wise that we should know about? Career-wise, no. I think the career ended years ago, but uh, I just realized I've been out of work for five years. Jesus. Yeah, as of the end of June. Yeah, I haven't done a radio show. Well, I've done a few. I did a couple of shots over WR here in New York and that was it you know I gave up I gave up because I knew that if I walked in the door at my age nobody would take me seriously yeah and it's sad because you're so damn good it's just uh, that, well that I don't know if angry. I'm as good as I used to I mean the audiences get smaller for the podcast and uh, you know uh, it, it's it's just harder and harder to get an audience and it's uh, you know uh, but I, I do it I do it because I want to keep my chops up, although I feel my, you know, I feel a little, you know, memory loss, things like that, that impinge upon my performance. But I guess I don't sound any different now when I'm talking to you, but I, I feel... No, I think yeah, your voice sounds like... Uh, one thing that people change when they get older a lot yeah. is their voice, and your voice sounds really strong. Yeah, well, I... Um, I, I, I just you know, uh, have a problem, uh, I don't feel I have the same facility. It's a little harder for me to do this interview with you than it would have been for me, say, 20 years ago. You know, that I have to be a little more attentive, a little bit more on, on uh, and what happens is, as you get older, and this happens to a lot of these people, you tend to rely on old tricks to keep you going. You know, you're doing... A lot of people, when they get to be my age, are doing the same act today they were doing 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and they immediately uh, go into performer mode, and then they do it, and then when they're off, they're old people again. <laughs> I always like to talk about the time I was watching the David Letterman show when he was over at NBC, and they, when they were taping the thing uh, across the hall, there was a show called Live at Five, which was a news show. And um, sometimes the people who were on that news show would come over and just sit in for a moment uh, on the Letterman show. So all of a sudden uh, they say, oh, look who's at the door. And they take a shot of the, of the, of the stage doors at the, at the Letterman show, and it's Bob Hope. Or you think it's Bob Hope, but it's this guy who's hunched over <laughs> and looking like a very old man, which he was at the time. He had to be in his 80s, right? Mm -hmm. Hunched over. And Letterman says, ladies and gentlemen, 
Look who's here, Bob Hope. And immediately he stands up straight and he swaggers out onto the stage. All of a sudden, his demeanor, he, he suddenly wow. switched on Bob Hope. You know, and, and, uh, and he sat down. Well, I really want to tell you, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, uh, goodbye, and he left, and I didn't, they didn't take Probably a shot of him leave, leaving. collapsed backstage. No, it's like, uh, it's like they, 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 it's time for Bob Hope. Okay, get the, uh, get the uh, uh, tire inflator out, and they will blow up the doll, <laughs> you know, and it'll go to work. That's about exactly what was happening. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So, you know, you go, hey, that's, you know. So what happens is as you get older, you start, um, uh, unfortunately, you start um, going into just what we call autopilot, okay? And uh, I feel that sometimes I have to go into autopilot, you know, and that, and that bothers me because I always like to improve and get better and so on. But, you know, the last thing that I ever came up with as an innovation is the thing we use now on the podcast, which is the citizen panel, in which I have a, a group of people all together uh, talking uh, using Skype. And I thought that that was a new way of doing a talk show because before it was just like somebody calls and the guy talks to him and then somebody else calls and the guy talks to him. And in my case, a bunch of about up to 10 people call me and I talk to them. Uh, and they all argue with each other and, you know. But that was my last invention. And that was about five years ago. So, yeah. You know. uh, but, uh, so, I mean, thank you for saying that I don't sound any different. I just inside I feel different. Well, I, said, well, I just every, feel like yeah. as we get older, certainly we're not as... Uh, um, I feel my mind is really slower than it was. And it Do you is. find your timing has changed at all? Yeah, it's just it's just I don't I can't riff very well at all. I never I was never big on it, but I just sometimes my mind just kind of freezes. Yeah, but you, uh, yeah, but it, do you do you feel that your timing has been altered at all? No, I don't. I think that's still good. Because the one thing a comedian, ladies and gentlemen, has to have is timing. A right. uh, telling a joke. Timing is everything. It's where you pause. Good example of good timing was Bob Hope. Bob Hope had great timing. Mm -hmm. wasn't particularly fun. He also had one other thing. Here's what Bob Hope had that uh, made him different than anybody else. He was not that funny as a comedian. Uh, in fact, his writers were not the best writers in Hollywood. But Bob Hope knew how to tell a joke. And he would say something, and then maybe you didn't find it funny, but he would then look at the audience after he told yeah, the joke. Yeah, he, he had that look. And people would laugh because he had a sense of authority about the joke he was telling. Does that make sense? He had supreme confidence, yeah. Yeah, it was what I call authority. Uh, and so you, you tell the joke, and then you look at the audience like, that. Now you can now you laugh. You know, mm -hmm. and and his posture on stage is one of the classic postures of all time. You know, he just planted his feet on the stage and he just went to work. Uh, one of the other great postures in comedy was Jack Benny. Uh, uh, but Benny was truly funny. Benny always made me laugh hard. Oh, he was great, and he could take those long, long pauses. Well, he he's, his timing was... As perfect as comedy timing comes, he knew within a millimeter of a second how long to hold a face or to or to pause before he went for the punchline. Yeah, you know, and it was it was. I mean, if you watch some of his uh, uh, say midlife work when he was doing the TV shows, uh, his timing was so spot on it is scary. And so if a comedian comes to me and says, How, who, who do I learn from? I say, well, watch Bob Hope's demeanor, watch his stance, and then watch uh, uh, Jack Benny for timing. You know. But do you, know you know who stole his stage persona and film persona from Hope? And he admits it, was Woody Allen. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, Woody Allen uh, always praised Bob Hope. Uh, but, but if you if you watch a Bob Hope movie, when all of a sudden he's in danger and he's going, well, I uh, I uh, you know I'm I'm, I'm out of here, uh, you know, uh, 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 I'm not the guy, you know, whatever. That's the same demeanor that Woody Allen used in his persona in films when he was trying to get out of something. And it is amazing. You don't see it because they're two entirely different people. But they did a documentary on Hope, and and Woody Allen was on it, admitting that he got a lot of his persona from from Hope. Uh, And uh, the only people that ever really totally realized it Remember SCTV? Mm-hmm. One of they my did a thing. Shows. They did a thing called uh, "Play It Again, Bob." Oh yeah, with uh, Dave Thomas doing Bob Hope and uh, Rick Moranis as Woody Allen. Yes, and that's exactly what they were saying: is that Woody Allen got his timing and everything from Hope. And it's right. He's they're absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, who'd you like better, Bob Hope in the movies or Bob Hope on television? I thought he was funnier in the movies. Like I didn't find him like a particularly great stand-up. Right. Or, or like his material wasn't great. Yeah. Hope, Hope was I. I you know uh, to me uh, was great in the movies. Yeah. Uh, he and Crosby together were were just heaven. Uh, those those road movies to this day uh, still work. You know they're still funny. Yeah, there's very few com a comedy that holds up for fifty or seventy years is truly great, and not not many do. And I, I I defy you to watch them and think they're sticking to a script, because it all looks like they're ad libbing them, and they aren't. Those things were written rock hard, mm-hmm. and and but they delivered the comedy in such a a relaxed fashion that uh, you know. That, uh, but anyway, I liked Hope better in the movies than I did on TV. Yeah. On the other hand, I liked Benny better on TV than I liked him in the movies. And he, but, but then again, he didn't have the greatest movie career. Yeah, uh, I remember when I was a kid, I was with Jack Benny had that. I think it was a Sunday night show, and I, I just, I that was before age discrimination TV. He was an older guy then. I just remember I loved him. Yeah, but do you remember also that they used to make fun about his movies? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> they'd always, they'd always give, a, 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 always make jokes about how bad the horn blows at midnight was. <laughs> and quite frankly, I love the horn blows at midnight. Loved it when I was a kid. Love it now. I have a poster in storage of of the movie. Uh, I love that film. You know. And. Uh... Everything I read was one of the most beloved guys in the business. Oh yeah, they loved him. He was he was supposedly a sweetheart, just a wonderful person. Yeah, uh, and uh, very giving, you know, not not stingy and all of that. But the thing is that I also uh, and I argue this about Benny, and a lot of people don't understand what I'm saying until I explain it. But Benny wasn't a comedian. Do you know where I'm going with this? No, he wasn't a stand-up. No, he wasn't a comedian. He was a clown. The difference being comedians tell jokes on people. Clowns have jokes pulled on them. Mm-hmm. And the butt of every Benny joke <laughs> was, was Benny. <laughs> you know, and, and his writers wrote to that character beautifully. And the best, the best example I ever had of it was an episode on TV where he goes to the supermarket and this little kid comes up to him and says, are you Jack Benny? And he goes, well, yes, I am, son. And he goes, "Uh, Mr. Benny, I play the violin too. He says, do you play as good as I do? He says, I used to. (laughs) Now that is one of the most beautifully created jokes I ever heard in my life. You play like you play like I do. He says I used to. <laughs> and then Benny would do that face. He would do the face. Well, you know, uh, and I, I just, I loved Benny. I was just, you know, he was just, 
it was just wonderful. I can, and I can still watch those shows to this day. And I don't know. You, people are listening. You probably won't do it. But go find Benny shows. They're on YouTube like crazy. Watch them. You and want they hold see, up. You want to see good, clean comedy. You know, mm. they made people laugh hard without dirty jokes in those yeah. days. It's amazing. It's just amazing. And also great writers, too. Hey, listen, we've run out of time once again. That always happens when we're having fun. And what I like about you is you get me to talk. Well, you know everything, so. You're a great straight man. I'm the Bud Abbott. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the Bud Abbott to my, no, I'm not Lou Costello. Can, before we go, can I just do my one impression? Of, of, mm -hmm. This is Lou Costello when he has just seen a monster and is trying to tell Abbott that there's a monster. You ready? You ready? <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Right? That's it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. You know, I was so busy doing something that I actually see here I am bare. I don't have my, uh, I don't have my shirt on. Hold on a second. I always like to put this shirt on over me. Why? I don't know. Mainly because it makes the lighting look better. Notice that? And then I forgot with the, with the, with the hair. With the cap. Well, let's forget about the cap tonight. I'm the, who am I fooling? Okay. Anyway, uh, just trying to do some things here. I can't figure stuff out anymore. The internet is, the internets are getting to me. Let me see here. Let me, uh, let me, um, uh, let me bring up the uh, citizen panel thingy, which is our, uh, uh, we, uh, our, we have a citizens panel. If you go over to gabnet.net, you can find out how to join it. That means we have a whole bunch of people at the same time talking at the same time. Well, they don't talk at the same time because I can see them, so they raise their hand when they want to talk, and that allows us a little bit of uh, the ability to... Uh, uh, be, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, 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 c control the, uh, the action. I'm trying to do th two things at the same time here, so you'll have to excuse me if, I, if I'm talking in circles. There we go. All right. Okay. All righty. Well, we're running. And uh, let me see here. Uh, should I put on a hat? I don't know. Does it, does it look all right? Okay. Uh, I'm just, I don't know. I've just been out of it for the last day or so. Um, I put myself on an antibiotic and uh, for the tooth. Uh, and I shouldn't be doing it really because it's an old antibiotic I had lying around. Uh, but it worked. But it makes me loopy and dizzy and uh, off point. So I don't know what the fuck it's, you know, to say. But uh, anyway, uh, give us a call. Uh, we're sitting here just jabbering while we're waiting for people to call. But hi, everybody. Oh. I'm, st I'm stressing over my, uh, my yearly medical uh, examination, uh, which, you know, he doesn't do that much. He checks the heart a little bit. He takes some blood. He sees if there's anything in the blood that's unusual, and then that's it, you know. Um, last year, I had a bad blood count. I mean, it was just horrible. It was off the wall. If I told you what it was, you'd, you'd wonder why I was still alive. And I couldn't figure out why. So later on in the year, I had to take another blood test, and I looked at my blood panels, and now they were all wonderful. My cholesterol was terrific. My LDL, LDL was terrific. Everything was terrific. What had happened is for that month, I had forgotten when I, I had one of these things where you take your pills and you put them in the little days of the week and the month and whatever, and I, I put them all in there. I forgot to put in the, uh, the uh, uh, Crestor. And that's why it went <laughs> sky high. <laughs> anyway, my heart is, is, is in good condition. Uh, hey, hey! Look, uh, two of us not wearing hats tonight. I think that's uh, yeah, that's wonderful, uh, Phil. Yeah, uh, that's terrific. 
Why? Uh, we are uh, exposing more skin now. Wait, a minute, I'm trying to turn it to turn you down. You're a little loud here, a little on oh. the loud side. Uh, yeah. I haven't messed with anything. Yeah, well, anyway, I I I turned you down. Okay. Well, thank you. I've, I've turned you down a lot of times. So. Yeah. Well, but you have accepted once or twice. You know? Yeah, I've accepted <laughs> once or twice. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. I I went to a rolfer today. Oh yeah, rolfing is. I had that done to me a couple of times. It's painful. Oh, it's wonderfully painful. Yeah. Uh, when I got done, though, I felt really good. But it, I, it it it. Uh, uh, I had somebody who did rolfing, and I said, "Okay, do it." And they did it. And it, you know, it's very painful. It's it's deep muscle massage. Very deep. Very deep. And and you sit there and you're in pain. But yeah. man. Afterwards, you're exhilarated. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, so I'm going to be going once a week for a little while, and uh, you know, uh, I think that the chiropractor put the spine in uh, in line, mm -hmm. and now the uh, Rolfer is going to work on those deep muscles. He said I was really bound up. They and all say that though, because they're trying to. Uh, 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 Make, make themselves creditable, you know. Well, oh, you're all you're all bound up, boy. That's a tight spot there, you know. Uh, believe me, I was bound up, <laughs> you know. And and he's working on posture, the way I sleep. Uh, there, there's. Uh, uh, I bought this uh, foam roller today. He told me to get on Amazon. It looks like a, a truck tire from an off-road vehicle. It's very aggressive. And uh, so he had me do a couple of exercises on his. And uh, when mine comes in, it's uh, it's supposed to help. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'd be nice not to not to be in pain. Right. Right. And, you know, today was one of the first days that uh, I, I didn't feel all bound up. Yeah. Well, today I feel woozy. I I, uh, I had a, my tooth was bothering me and I felt it was getting infected. So I took some antibiotics I had lying around the house. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the side effects, and I've been, like, really, like, dizzy for, like, a week. And it yeah. turns out that that's ex this, this antibiotic does that. You oh, know. What, what's the antibiotic? Metrosinol. Flagyl, basically. Yeah. Oh. So, anyway. Uh, I get a little flagyl once in a while yeah, myself. Yeah. <laughs> How, how's the rest of you doing? How's the, uh, how's the pr prostate coming along? Are you... Uh, Pissing uh, your pants I'm, a lot, or is it getting better? It's getting better. Uh, I'm prostate less, and uh, you know they they took it out. I saw I, I saw a thing today advertised because you know I'm always worried that I'm going to have to have it someday, mainly because I get illnesses everybody else does, but I'll probably be dead before it ever is a problem. It's a psychoschematic? No, no, but I, they had an ad for the cyber knife. Are you aware of this? So yeah. Uh, uh, it, uh, a ho that hospital on yourself? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a hospital that has the cyber knife for prostate, and they say that you can uh, have your prostate surgery without lack of continence and a lot of other things. So yeah, I don't yeah. know what it does, you know, but it it it, it must do something nice. Yeah. You know? Well, um, the thing that David Hajek had mm -hmm. doesn't require. Uh, uh, a uh, intrusive surgery. Yeah, uh, you haven't heard back from David to find out if uh, he had some reoccurring, uh, which which is what I was. No, told. but today he just subscribed to my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Every now and then his 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 visage pops up, you know, in one yeah. way or another. So yeah. Well, yeah, we miss him. Be he, nice if he called. Yeah, but it'd be really nice if he called. But you know, I think he's there in Europe, and it's uh, time is off, and you know. Yeah, uh, uh, his father turns off the electricity. He does. Tur didn't he say that he turns yeah. off the electricity like at midnight or something? Yeah. Who does that? Uh, I his guess father. his father. <laughs> you know. Um, so I um, yeah I uh, other than the raw thing today, I mean that was uh, that was my morning. And uh, I, I was really surprised at the, uh, the how much better I feel. Yeah, so you uh, do feel better. Yeah. So you, you got any news today? News of what? Oh, new, oh wait, here, here comes Ray Renati. Uh, there we go. 
who, who uh, every now and then gets apoplectic because of you. But that's okay. That's fine. Hello, hello, uh, Ray. Let's howdy, howdy. Let, let's see your face. Yeah. Oh, what a nice hat that is. Oh, you guys were wearing hats. I was listening, so I figured you know. I'd make it up. You, I'd make you, the difference. Yeah, you'd make up the difference. Uh, yeah. No, what were you saying about uh, uh, Phil? You were saying something? Uh, I, I don't think Ray gets that apoplectic. It just has uh, uh, things he's passionate about and uh, <laughs> has has a difficult time accepting anything other than his point of view. Me? <laughs> yeah. Oh. By the way... Uh, no, actually, I don't. I, I, I only get upset for like uh, 20 seconds and then I'm fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, here here's one that uh, that has been uh, suddenly uh, I suddenly realized is a bigger story than anybody is reporting it and it's two separate things that come in convergence with each other. The other day, uh the uh, justice department the a judge said it was okay for uh uh who was it? The Time Warner and um um uh, who is it to merge? Uh, AT and T to merge, uh, and uh, now Comcast is trying to buy up Fox. All right. Uh, now the thing is that now you have AT and T, and they own a big media outlet. It has news mm -hmm. outlets. It has movies. It has comic books. You know. AOL. Huh? They got AOL. Well, no, they don't. I think AOL split off. I think they actually dumped AOL. They le <laughs> left them over there in the dust, you know. Uh, AOL's headquarters is over near near me now. They have one little tiny building. Well, uh, you know, it's almost nothing. Years ago, when they were building the AOL Time Warner building, um, uh, Shecky was walking by it with a friend of his, and Shecky looked up at it and said, "You know, by the time this building opens." AOL won't be on the building. And sure enough, he was right. You know, he was right. But here's the deal. So now you've got these, the, and then you add to that the fact that net neutrality is over with because the FCC killed it. So what does this mean? All of a sudden, isn't it interesting that all these internet service providers are buying up media? And that means that eventually you're going to see a situation where, hey, you got AT&T, you can get all the time Warner you want, but you can't watch Fox. Did, did I get you know, this wrong on this net neutrality? I thought it was overturned. No, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. No, they were trying to, and they're still oh. trying to. But okay. uh, no, but, it, but Ajit Pai brought it into being just the last uh, Monday. Okay, for one reason or another, I thought yeah, they said but, but, it was overturned. Here, here, here's, think, of, think about how terrible this is, that you don't have net neutrality, and yet you have, and now you have all these uh, uh, Internet companies buying up media outlets. So what are they going to do? You, let's say you uh, subscribe to AT&T. And you can get all the Warner stuff you want. HBO, you can get the movies, you can get the comic book. Dip, 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 dip. But I'm sorry, uh, you're not going to be able to get Showtime that's owned by CBS. We don't own that. And yeah, so, so we're no, no, they, they, ha they have the right to cut it off. Well, that's, well, that, uh, no, well, that's, right. no. Then you subscribe to a service that has it if that's what you want. No, no, but, no, but then you got to surprise. What I'm saying is they're going to start uh, di dictating what you're able to watch and not watch depending upon what they own. Mm. And yeah. that's not good. I don't know. You know, oh, I, mean, I don't know. How's it good, Phil? Phil, 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 ship, Phil. You don't ask for Lincoln. Phil, how's it good? How's it good? How's, well, it, how's it benefit you or me? Well, you know, everybody... No, wait a minute, I'm asking you... You, you a, want no, everything. No, answer you, you this want, question. You want it all. No, no, answer this question. Yeah. How is it going to benefit you? Well, because I'm going to pick a service that has... No, 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 no. That I want. Right now, you pick a service, and they have to carry... They carry Showtime, and they carry HBO, and they carry this, and they carry that. But if all of a sudden, they say, well, we don't have that, okay? And the other one does... But, Wait a minute, hold a on a second. How, right now, you're getting it all in one place. How are you being served if this goes into effect? Okay. Well, right now, I'm using Sling. 
So with Sling, no, Sling I has have nothing limited... to do with what we're discussing. And by the way, where Sling is concerned, how is Sling delivered to you? Uh, over the Roku. Over the Roku, and how's the Roku served? Uh, over the internet. Uh, over the, what internet company? Um, I have Wave now. I had Comcast. Uh, suppose I... Wave says, uh, "Hey, uh, no Sling." Well, then there'll be something else to choose from. Mm -hmm. And suppose uh, they say uh, no sling. Or, suppose all those companies say no sling and force sling out of business. Because they've got their own version of the same thing. I, I have a choice of not uh, well, using you're, that you're, You still haven't told me how this benefits you, and it doesn't. It just well, clearly doesn't. Be, well, it's their business. I, I don't really care what they do. Uh, or, well, no, or you, how you don't do care it. what they do. It comes out of your pocketbook. Only if I subscribe to it. Yeah, but let's say, let's say, just for shits and giggles here, that all these companies buy up media outlets, and now that you have uh, 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 the net neutrality is gone, and they can say what you can get on their system and what you can't get on their system, and all of them say we don't want Sling or any of these companies that uh, you know you can like like uh, like Direct TV for instance now where you can buy all these channels and so on. Same thing as Sling, uh, but they say we're not going to we're not going to carry these things because they they eat up too much bandwidth. They'll use that as an excuse. How about this one? Uh, yeah, we're going to run Netflix, but unfortunately, we're charging Netflix quadruple the amount of money we were charging them before, and so I guess your Netflix bill is going to be like $30 a month. Well, then GabNet will become much more popular than it was. Well, I doubt that. Yeah. You know, uh, you, you're going to have to start doing programming, original programming. Yeah. It's a GabNet original. Oh, well, no. Suppose, suppose AT&T, or, or let's say uh, Wave, says... Yeah. Well, we don't like what Alex Bennett is doing, so we're not going to let you. We're not going to let you listen to it. Yeah, he, they're probably right. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're making a joke, Phil. But, okay. but, but I, I, look I at the reality of this. Know. Look at as the. As far as I'm concerned, I, I would be better off with less TV than more. Uh, and I don't really no, no, care you're, you're whether changing, I have HBO you're, you're, or you're Showtime. You're changing the whole nature of the discussion. Yeah. About, about what you don't care if you do or don't. But you asked me what I what I thought would happen if uh, if I was restricted. Let me let me re let me reverse this, uh, Ray. Huh? How would this yeah. affect you? Do you think? Oh, it you know, it just makes things more difficult, and you end up having to pay more money. You're yeah. going to end up having to pay more money to more people if you want everything, or you or get if you want certain things. I'm already seeing it somewhat. Um, like if you don't have a Roku, say, if you have, um, I have some other devices and none of them have Amazon Prime. Really? I don't know why. Uh, you're right. So to get Amazon Prime, I have to put it through my laptop and put it through Chromecast to see, watch it on my TV. It's a pain in the ass. I why, had, why? A, I had Apple TV and they didn't, they, they weren't carrying Amazon. They finally did because they were, they were shamed into it, Yeah. but they weren't carrying Amazon, uh, because they didn't want it to compete with Apple. You know, because yeah. Amazon sells records too. You know, and, and I think maybe some of these smaller uh, devices music. that aren't Roku, Netflix probably says, okay, yeah, you, we'll, you know, you, we'll, we'll go on your device, but you better, you can't put Amazon Prime on there. No, Netflix bet, doesn't say it's not Netflix that says that. It was Apple that was not putting Amazon Prime. The, on. That's what. It, that's what, oh, I see. Yeah, Roku. No, but I'm talking about. I don't have a Roku. I have like a. I watch these things through like a, a, my DVD player, my son's Nintendo thing. Uh, oh, you have, you have you have. It's like you have a, a smart. Uh, TV, yes, a smart and also TV. Comcast. Okay, Comcast. I can watch Netflix. I can watch. I can watch everything except Amazon Prime through Comcast. Hmm. Yeah, What's but but, but if you hook up your your the Nintendo and let's say it's capable of playing apps, it has smart TV services in there. You can get Amazon through that, right? Mm, no, really? Because well, maybe on the Nintendo, can. but not well, on like, Comcast. It, for instance, uh, in my cable, my FiOS, you can directly go on FiOS to Netflix, but you can't go to Amazon. But I don't give a shit. Because I've got a, a Apple TV and I've got a Roku, and I it built into the set itself. I've also got 
yeah. the LG, I've got Amazon right in the built into the TV. So I don't need uh, to necessarily have that service have Amazon. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't have a smart TV. Yeah. So I have, to, I have to run through Amazon Prime through my uh, Apple laptop and then connect that to my Chromecast, which mm -hmm. is connected to the TV, and then I can watch Amazon Prime on the TV through the Chrome web browser. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, is there a particular reason you didn't want a Roku? Oh, I had one, but it broke. Oh. It crashes constantly. Something's wrong with it. You know, I, I've got a Roku 3. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, I, I like it. You know, I well, don't have uh, I, I think the latest TV. I think it's terrific. Uh, I uh, should just get a new one. But, you know, if you, if you don't want to spend 79 bucks for that uh, array, you can get mm -hmm. uh, what's called a uh, Roku stick. And that's like oh, the stick, yeah. 39 bucks. Okay. And, and I put one of those in one of my TV sets, like the one in the kitchen. Uh, 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 so that where we have a TV set, so that we can watch it, and uh, it works beautifully. You know, does it work just as well as a regular, the more expensive Roku? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's not 4K, you know. Oh, I but see. if you don't need that, you know, the Roku, I don't have a 4K. I don't think I have. But, a 4K but if you have the, if you have the Roku three, it will play on 4K. Hello, Patrick. Hi. Did you hear what we were talking about at all with the? Uh, with the fact that uh, you know that uh, that uh, AT and T just got the okay to buy uh, uh, Time right. Warner, yeah. which and then the next day, uh, uh, or or within the same day, uh, net neutrality died. So now you've got a, 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 a internet company, an internet provider, who owns all uh, all these companies like Warner Brothers Movies, HBO. Uh, we could go on and on and on, and in, in, at a future point, they could say, "We want you to buy our product. We don't want you to watch Netflix. We don't want you to watch Showtime." Was Trump against the merger of AT and T and Time Warner? I don't I know. I think he was. I think he was. Yeah. So how did it get pushed through? Uh, because it went through because, without any because resistance. I, 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 Ajit Pai is an asshole. Yeah, no, but it had something to do with Congress, or uh, it, it got pushed. No, through no, somehow. no, no, no. The FCC made it law. Okay, uh, now uh, Congress has nothing to say about that unless they want to, and there are people in Congress working to repeal or bring back net neutrality. Mm -hmm. Okay, but whether that will happen or not, it's a lot harder to get things done than undone. In you know, uh, it, with, with you had a, a commission there, the FCC. Suddenly saying boom, 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 no net neutrality, and so then we got to put that back into shape. Yes, Ray. Well, I, I just don't know what happened to all the laws against monopolies that used to be enforced. You know, uh, it seems like it's. Yeah. Do you remember getting, when they were they were just after Microsoft, like yeah. gangbusters suing a, every country was suing Microsoft for being a monopoly, and and now no one seems to care. What happened? Uh, with, I'll tell you what happened with Microsoft is that Microsoft became a monopoly, but didn't realize it. Okay, it was yeah. while they were asleep that it happened. You know, one day they're a little company, and they still think of themselves as a little company. They're sitting up there in Redmond, Washington, and they're doing their their stuff. And all of a sudden, somebody says, uh, "You know, you're this is uh, you know uh, antitrust and so on." And you're going, "Gee, I guess we did get that big <laughs> while we were." Well, the other looking. thing they did was is they started. Buying uh, small, I mean, they started putting stuff. Uh, uh, they started putting capability into the operating system that would destroy small companies. Like um, no, they weren't. There doing was a that. company that would would no. do compression, and uh, Microsoft put compression in Windows, and the, and there were two companies, and they suddenly went out of business like there was overnight. Also, a um, uh, uh, like it wasn't McAfee, but it was a, a different one that uh, that. Um, they they didn't include in their package. No, what you're talking about, what you're talking about, <coughs> is the Netscape Explorer. Netscape, that's it. The that's dust it. up, and that was that they were putting Explorer. When you bought um, uh, uh, Windows, it had Explorer burned right. into the code. Okay, yeah, that's yes. uh, Whereas you had to go out of your way to get Netscape to work. They didn't make it not work, but you had to go download it and use it and so on. And that's mm -hmm. what they argued. Now, the thing that, that, that uh, uh, Microsoft argued, and it was a good argument, 
is that they were, the reason they wanted to have the explorers, because the explorer would be the same thing as your finder and a lot of other things. In other words, it became an integral part of the operating system, not separate from it. And uh, they wanted to keep it there. But, you know, what they said was you have to have the ability to get rid of Explorer if you don't want it or to be offered or, or, or offered all these others or Netscape gets loaded into Microsoft when you, when you Windows when you install it. Um, but that's what that was all about. What we've got today and what Ray said, and it is, it is a, a real problem if we think about it, is that you can't name very many companies that own internet outlets. You know, there's a handful. It's uh, a monopoly. Know, and they're all, yeah. they're all yeah. merging. Everything's merging with each other to a point where there are maybe three or four big companies, and that's it. And if you don't do business with them, you know, and that is, we, we have created monopolies. Yeah. And I thought we had created laws back in the 30s or 40s against that because it was happening with the oil industry and the automobile industry and steel and now we're just ignoring well, this them. bullshit started with Reagan. trust this this is bullshit started with reagan okay he started loosening up on all this shit and uh oh let the let the uh let the uh, uh market dictate blah 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 so on and so forth but the fact is that you allow businesses to do whatever they fuck they want to do. They're not going to do the right thing. They're only <laughs> going to do the right thing for that company. To say that they're suddenly going to become, uh, uh, you know, giving and caring and, and prices are going to drop like crazy, you're out of your mind. That's not what think, they're thinking of. It's not up here. It's not in their DNA. I think people rebel when they start getting fucked by business. That bi it's up to business to do the right thing in order to uh, build a, a solid long-term customer base. And well, uh, if you believe that, then but, then look at the world around you because that isn't the way things are working. It's up to business to big build a bigger wallet. But but Phil, <laughs> that assumes that people have a choice. So if you eliminate choice, no matter how upset people are, uh, if they have no choice then they're stuck with with the behemoth if you're cho that if, if, if my choice my they're choice pyramid they're all just bigger pyramids for instance in manhattan if i want internet uh, i only have two choices uh, uh, when it comes to internet in my home i either have fios or spectrum that's it is that plus a regulation local regulation well there, originally there were local regulations and those regulations are all across the country you know uh, yeah where they limit where they limit the number of providers that's well. They give out the franchises. What they do, they so give out the franchises. So, if these providers merge, does that mean there's room for another provider to come in and compete against them? Probably not. You know, if something they try, but they'll get crushed or yeah, sucked up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking about. You know, it's like in radio. Let me explain something to you. I use radio as the best example because it's the one that I know. Uh, is and if I get a little weird here, it's because I'm. I don't know. My I'm, I'm lightheaded tonight. Anyway. Uh, when in radio, uh, if you want to start your own radio station, Phil, you and I get together, we get some money, we, get, we buy somebody's stick somewhere, and we got a radio station. And we know that I'm a great broadcaster, and uh, uh, I know other great broadcasters we can bring on to this station. We're going to have the best fucking radio station in the world. I can be number one, and I won't be able to survive against these clusters. Okay, so to be a singular station and be number one, I'm sorry, just, you know, you're not going to be able to make it because you have to be, because the clusters are what are making it. Yeah, mm. so. And you can get good, uh, and you can get good, but most of the time those big companies will come in and say, hey, you're really good and sweeten the deal so good that you'll sell it off for a good amount of money and walk away with it. Yeah, but even if you didn't do that, the fact is yeah, you would have, a, you you would have a, as a singular station in a market, you would have a hard time surviving. Yeah. Okay, you would have a just a ghastly crushed. time surviving. Yeah. And, and you know, Alex, mm -hmm. you're, you're not the only uh, radio personality who's out doing what you're doing right now. There are a bunch of them, and, and, they're, and they're, having, they're all having a hard time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh. Yeah. You no. Know, it it. Look. You know. I I said that uh, uh, out of work in broadcasting. Uh, 
what 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 is it? Uh, no, the, the internet, the, the podcasting, or out of work broadcasters. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, could you yeah. start the Alex Bennett School of Broadcasting? <laughs> <laughs> Well, apparently I'm not that good at it, because look at me. I'm wearing a cardboard belt. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's recyclable. <laughs> that sounded like Christopher Walken. No, that was, uh, that was Zero Mostel and the producers. Oh. Look at me, I'm wearing a My cardboard belt. <laughs> yes, yes, hey, Ray. You know, Alex, uh, I was listening to you on, on TuneIn when I was walking, and you know, TuneIn sometimes loops if it gets behind, Yeah. and it kept repeating. You kept on repeating, I had sex with Harvey Weinstein. I had sex with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Wait a minute. I had sex. What do you mean? I, I don't get okay, that. Okay, so when I listen to TuneIn on my phone, yeah. if, if, if uh, the signal gets behind the broadcast, it mm -hmm. loops backwards until it catches up. And, and I wound up saying I had sex yeah. with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, like five times in a row. That's not tonight. Tonight. I didn't even when you were talking to even, Bubs. Oh really? Oh, I didn't. I didn't listen to the interview because I already did it, so I didn't well, have to only, listen I, to it. Well, it was probably only on TuneIn. Yeah. It, it was just funny because you were repeating it over and over again. <laughs> I mean, TuneIn was forcing you to repeat. <laughs> well, well, well. You know. Hey, you know when you were talking about Jack Benny, I was listening. Uh, I was trying to listen to some of his old radio shows, and it's weird because you hear the audience cracking up after a joke that wasn't very funny, but they're laughing at him because of what he's doing physically. You know, yeah. and so you can't see it. You hear them laughing, and you know they're laughing at him because he's doing that look or whatever. Yeah, right. the way he turns his head. Yeah. But, but on the radio, unless you know who Jack Benny is, you have no idea why they're laughing. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's the old uh, Jack Benny routine where he's getting robbed, and the guy says, your money or your life. And Benny pauses. And he pauses. <laughs> and he pauses. And then the guy, who was played by Sheldon Leonard, says, hey, bud, I said your money or your life. And Benny, with the perfect timing, just waited the scintilla of a microsecond and said, I'm thinking it over. <laughs> the, the whole audience <laughs> broke into laughter. It is known to be the longest laugh in the history of radio. It was 45 <laughs> seconds. Didn't die down. It was the perfect Benny joke, but it was all based, I'm sure, a lot of it on what he was doing in the studio with the audience, too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I used to love to watch him and Lucille Ball when, when he was on the Lucille Ball, you know, the reincarnation of the Lucille Ball show. Yeah. And he, he would be a guest on there. Yeah. yeah those, are, those are the episodes I loved. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, so, you know, what, what's happening is, is that, you know, a, a singular radio station can't make it anymore. And the fact is you've got these behemoths now. You've got these super, uh, uh, now there's a fight going on. Comcast is trying to buy Fox because Rupert Murdoch is getting rid of most of Fox. Not getting rid of Fox News. You'll be happy about that, uh, 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 Phil. Uh, but he's not getting rid of Fox <laughs> News. And, uh, but he is getting rid of all the TV networks that he has and the movie company. And I don't think the publishing, I don't think the publishing goes along with that, like the Wall Street Journal and whatever. And Comcast is trying to buy that, but Disney is also bidding for it. Do you know what Disney owns these days? Everything. Everything. All the Marvel stuff. Uh, all uh, 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 Marvel, uh, Star Wars stuff. I mean, they're just, they're rolling in it. Okay? And they're the most successful media company in the business. And um, when you've got a behemoth like that, and then you've got uh, AT&T or Comcast buying up somebody, forget it. The, you know, all media is going to be controlled by three companies. And is there room for you, the independent? Probably not. Where are you going to get it on the air? Where are you going to get it into a theater? 
You know, the only thing they can own are the theaters because there was a rule made years ago they can't own the, the theaters. The theatrical distribution can't, uh, they can't own the means of theatrical distribution. Don't they get all the money from the show and the theater just gets the popcorn and uh, concessions? Uh, it's, it's a sliding scale. It starts out the first week, I think everything goes to the company. Second yeah. week, the theater gets like 20%. By the time you get to the fifth week, the company, the theater's getting something like sixty yeah, percent. Okay. Yeah, but there's nobody in the theater watching that show. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they got to make their money off their eight-dollar bucket of popcorn, where the box probably costs more for them to make than the popcorn. Yeah. Well, the box actually tastes better than the popcorn uh, yeah, in many yeah, cases. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, it. Uh, uh, that's how theaters make money, is, is the concessions. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, for instance, try and bring in your own concessions. Walk oh, in with a soda and walk in with a popcorn. Oh, Watch what them. happens. And that's, I, a, that's I a, by the way, that's a suit waiting to happen. That's like Microsoft. Like, you've got to take Explorer, right? You've got to take our browser. You can't bring in your own. I, I walked in with a, a, a big Starbucks uh, soy latte once, and they told me I couldn't bring it in. And I, I said, that I'm, you know, uh, I'm not putting it down on the ground and throwing it away. So I, I hung out and drank it. But I always, be, I always wear a large coat and hide everything under. Yeah. If they did that to me, I would probably say, you know, you're really setting yourself up for a big antitrust suit here because you can't tell me that I can't bring my own nourishment. Yeah. You know, that, you know, that, I, that I have to drink the swill you're serving at the, at the, at the what do you call it, counter. I got all that sugary, sweety stuff and the, the stuff filled with, uh, with the cyclomates or whatever they put in it yeah. for, uh, for non-sweeteners, uh, uh, you know, non-sugar sweeteners. Uh, I don't want any of that shit. I want to bring in my, I have my protein shake here. I'm bringing my protein shake in, right? No, you can't do that. I wonder what they would do if I said I'm bringing in my service dog. You know, oh, they'd have to let you. They'd have yeah. to let you, but I don't know about your service peacock. You know, they've had a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know why AOL went out of you know really uh, lost favor with people because it sucked. <laughs> no, because nobody could spell it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, did you hear? Like did you hear that? It, now, you remember when Rudy Giuliani married his current wife, Judith, it's because he was cheating on his former wife with Judith. And now, now I, he I, and Judith, wait a minute, he and Judith are breaking up, and she's complaining that he cheated on her. Now, he, she should have seen that one coming. But they showed the woman who he's having an affair with now, and all I could think of was, how do you kiss Rudy Giuliani without throwing up in his mouth. Isn't it her, his cousin, his second cousin or something that, he, that he's dating? I have no idea. I, no, I read be. something today that his, uh, either his ex or his future one is his second cousin. Yeah. Hey, what, was it, wasn't the one that, he, that, that just dumped him, wasn't she living up in the, in the spare room while his other wife was dying, his ex-wife was dying of cancer or something like that? No, she was dying of cancer. She didn't die. No, you're thinking, I'll tell you, we're, you're thinking of, I think, what's his name? Huh? Newt no, 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 Newt Gingrich. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking of Newt Gingrich. Is the guy that served his wife with divorce papers while she was in the hospital with cancer. She recovered, by the way. But Or John Edwards, uh, same thing. John, Edwards, John Edwards, Edwards, same thing. thing. Yeah. Uh, but by the way, uh, New King Rich's wife, I think, is still alive. She didn't die of it. So, but what a sleaze ball, you know? And wait till she gets out of the hospital. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're we're dealing with disgusting. I'll tell you, I've you know, I, I've I've met a lot of these uh, Republican conservatives in my time, and I've interviewed them, and I have to say, like, I like Mike Huckabee, charming guy, just a really nice guy. Uh, hate his politics. I told him that to his face. I said, I hate your politics, but damn it, you're a nice guy. <laughs> you know? Um, uh, the guy who was the governor uh, who went to jail, uh, that just got... Uh, Blagojevich. Blagojevich. Loved him. Loved the guy. Terrific. You know? 
Uh, um, who else? Uh, uh, the, the the guy who wound up on Dancing with the Stars, but he also went to jail. Uh, uh, who uh, who's the black guy that hates Jews uh, uh, that uh, you uh, like? Farrakhan. He doesn't Farrakhan. he doesn't hate Jews, Phil. Yeah. It's no, he does not hate Jews. Uh, Giul hate. Giuliani's first. However, wife. however, however, if he met you, he might change his mind. Yeah. Giuliani's first wife was his second cousin. Really? They were kissing cousins. Mm, good. Anyway, so um, where was I? Oh, so anyway, what I was going to say is that I met a lot of Republicans who I thought I would hate and that I really liked. They were, they were good people. They were decent people. I enjoyed being with them, and they had a sense of humor, and I could kid them, and I could tell them, hey, look at me. I'm a, I'm a, a radical leftist, and here I am with you, and ha, ha, ha. We had a good time, right? Newt Gingrich was a fucking asshole. I never met a bigger fucking asshole than Newt Gingrich. Well, I did, actually, Roy Cohn. But it, it, it comes close second. Newt what Gingrich did he do he had, to you? No, what did he do no to you? you know what it is? No sense of humor. No sense well, of humor about yourself or about the world around you. He was just a absolute prick. You mean he was a serious guy? Yeah. No, he wasn't a serious guy. He was taking himself too seriously. Yeah. You know, Mike Huckabee, make a joke about Mike Huckabee, he laughs. You know, that's the, that, that's the true test of a person. You know, they you pull a little joke at their expense and they get a good laugh out of it. You know, and they know you're kidding and, uh, and whatever. But not Newt Gingrich, not this guy. I got him good, though. First time I interviewed him, I didn't throw him any hardball questions because I wanted to get him to come back. Then he came back the second time, and in the middle of the interview, I said, how come I see on all those interview shows on Sunday? I said, isn't that the Lord's Day? <laughs> and he said, oh, well, uh, 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 I, uh, I go to church first, and then I go. No, I said, but it's the Lord's Day. You're not supposed to go do those shows. I heard he converted to Judaism. Newt? Yeah, we don't want him. We don't want him. <laughs> they got me. No, but he's a slime bag, you know. But you know. But oh, by the way, did you hear Sarah Huckabee is quitting? Yeah, end of oh, the, yeah? By the end of the year. End of the year. Yeah, yeah. She can't take it no more, huh? She can't uh, live and, and, and her anymore. assistant, tough, her her assistant is leaving too. They they're both leaving. Yes, Patrick. It's a tough job because she has to lie all the time. Sorry. Yeah. I think Huckabee is quitting because he misses his fucking television show that he had on. No, no, she, no, 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 no. Sarah, Sarah. Sarah Huckabee is quitting. Oh, Spokesperson. Sarah. Yeah. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, I should have said, and he would have known what I was talking about. Well, now that uh, Sean Spicer has become the darling of the media, maybe he'll come back and he won't have such a tough time with them. Really? Yeah. Oh, they'd, they'd have a field day with him. Well, they like him, you know. I think they should bring back the mooch. Uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Actually, Give him another I, chance. <laughs> I, I heard him on uh, Fox uh, this morning, and he comes across as a pretty intelligent guy. Oh, really? Yeah, then you're pretty <laughs> stupid. Then you're a pretty stupid person if you feel that. <laughs> or, 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 or you're gullible. Well, actually, you know, gullible isn't in the dictionary. No. <laughs> really. Hey, Siri. <laughs> no, don't do that. You just heard it go da ding. Yeah, yeah. I heard it. Uh, I uh, uh, I was going to buy another Echo uh, and put it in like, uh, I don't know. Every, nobody calls them Echo. That's what they're called, but they call them Alexis. Uh, and, and put it, I was going to put it in here. And then I went, no, because my other one has Alzheimer's and starts talking you know, just babbling something that it's incoherent, answering a question nobody asked. You know, so. Is that the way you make friends? You know, and now you got these little spots that uh, you put all over the house. So you have somebody to talk to during the day. Oh, no, I, I enjoy my I, I'll tell you, I, I, I love I love my little spot, you know, that yeah. I have by the bedside that has the clock and the TV video in it and so on. And uh, uh you know, reminds me of my appointments and things like that. And then the regular Alexa that I got when I first, the first one I got, the Echo, uh, and that one's in the kitchen, still working just fine. The only thing was, here's something that happened the other day to me. And here's how I go get really stupid, okay? 
um, all of a sudden, my uh, extended uh, uh, Wi-Fi isn't working. It died, you know, just wouldn't connect. It was, I tried everything, all right, and it wouldn't work. So I immediately run out of the house, and I run down to Best Buy. Because I, you know, I need it now because my Echo doesn't work without it. My watches and things like that don't work without it. Wi-Fi on the phone doesn't work, you know. So I got to replace it now. So I wait, I, wait, wait, wait. Did you unplug it? Yes. Oh, I did everything. And replug it. In? Oh, I did all of that. I did all of that. It just I would mean, not. It would not connect. Just checking. It, <laughs> you know, hey, it's been around for about four years and it went bad. You know, you know that's, that's so I run down and I, 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 I say I just want a Wi-Fi extender and they say well here they are and I figured I'd buy the best one because I wanted one that had like tri-band so that it would go all over the apartment and it was $169 $189 with tax or something like that and I take it home and I, I look online at Amazon and of course on Amazon it's $145 $25 cheaper, but I couldn't have ordered it from Amazon because I needed it then. The one thing I forgot to do was look up Amazon on my iPhone and say, they're selling it for $145. I forgot to do that because I was in such a rush to get yeah. the goddamn thing. And then I figured, well, what I could do is take it back and say I don't want it and then buy another one. <laughs> Right, and then, but I said, only give you a store for, credit for, for twenty-five bucks. I don't need that kind of grief, you know. Yeah. They match. They match Amazon. Yeah, but they at yeah. the time of purchase, but not yeah, after right. the fact. I can't call them and yeah. say, "Hey, I just saw it was a hundred and you know, forty-five. Yeah. But uh, but that that's the one thing I I basically needed it for was that the the uh, echoes weren't working because they weren't getting a Wi-Fi signal. You know, uh, I do have a Wi-Fi signal coming out of right here in my uh, in my uh, studio, but it doesn't go through the whole house because these walls, as you can see, are pure. These are so thick uh, you can't you almost can't knock you can't knock them down. They're, are there bars on the windows? No. Oh well, you know when you got thick walls like that, it could be a penitentiary. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we don't have bars on, especially on the eighth floor. If you're on the first floor, you have bars. <laughs> you know, especially in Harlem or in the old days in Harlem. Not now. Yeah. They they don't uh, come down from the roof, you know, second story guys. No, no, no. no. Well, every now and then, your girlfriend says there are only three apartments on this floor. Okay, and girlfriend, you left the door unlocked. I'm going, do you see that, do I look raped? You know, I mean, do I, is there any furniture missing that I'm not aware of? No, well then don't give me a bad time. I'm sorry, the door, I left the door open. You know, here's the, here's the thing she does. Occasionally when I'm cooking, I cook on the stove and then I go and I move the stuff to the plate and then to the, the sink. But what I sometimes forget to do is turn off the oven, uh, turn off the gas. And the reason I forget to turn off the gas is it's so quiet that I don't hear it, you know. So she'll come home and see that I left the, the it on. And I'm in here working, doing something, posting shows. Come into the kitchen. <laughs> why? Just come into the kitchen. I said, I know why you want me to come into the kitchen. I probably left the, f the, the, the burner on. She goes, yes. And I said, okay, would you turn it off for me, please? No, I want you to come in the kitchen and turn it off yourself. You'll learn a lesson. I said, how many times have I done this? She says, about 100 times. I said, did I ever learn my lesson? She said, no. I said, then go, why don't you turn it off for me? Just turn it off and say, you know what you did? You left the, the oven on. But no, there she wants me to go all the way in there. So I started going in there, and I said, I'm not going to go turn it off. Just and she's now pushing me towards the kitchen. You gotta turn it off. You gotta turn it off. There are cooktops now this that is a are, female thing that are like electronic, and with a special pot or pan, uh, when you set it on the cooktop, it cooks and it, and it heats up. But you can touch the surface of it if if as long as you're not touching it in that pan. It's it's not hot and uh, well, it's just it's, uh, it's, it's probably convection. Oh, induction. It's uh, induction. induction. That's yeah. it. 
I think they've been around for years. Yeah, know. yeah, exactly. But Where, I, 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 no, I prefer to cook with a flame. I really well, do. I, I would too. Because you can control. You can because you can control the heat. You know. Yeah. Next time, just say Alexa, turn off the burner. Well, no, I can't <laughs> do that because it's not electronic. That's all right. You can still say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know yes. What, Yes, right. You know what I did a few months ago? What? I have one of these hot pots, you know, that you just plug in and it heats the water up really fast. Yeah. yeah. And I I put it, I, I don't know what I was thinking, I put it on the stove and turned on the stove. And it's rubber on the bottom. And I had a like a three-foot flame in the kitchen. <laughs> rubber burning, and the whole house was full of rubber smoke. And I froze, and my wife had to put out the fire... And we all had to leave the house for a few hours and turn on all the fans and uh, stinky. There's nothing oh worse. My God, than, I feel like a complete idiot. There's nothing worse than rubber burning. Yeah, I know that. From, I, step, I know that from having. I know that. I, I know that from having protected sex. Thank you very much. I'll be here all. Day. I don't. Boom, boom. Didn't the firemen people come? God, to I don't know. When you? I'm loopy like this, I'm really call very. Because my wife put it out pretty What's fast. strange is I'm loopy and tired, and I'm. I, I'm more uh, uh, cognizant of everything. I, I have no idea why. Anyway, so anyway, I'll, I'll find out Tuesday I'm going to die. So, you know. Because <laughs> the brain, nobody knows shit about the my brain. My PSA will probably go crazy, and he'll check my heart and say, where is it? You know. <laughs> Oddly enough, I, you know, when it comes to going, working out and things like that, I never get it run out of breath or anything like that. Then I work up a sweat. Maybe, maybe you don't have any blockages like me. Well, you know? I, I don't have any blockages. I just have this mild stenosis, which he checks. He'll probably check it this time. Because he's got his big stenosis machine. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he, he bought this, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's about, what do you call it? Um, um, oh, uh, ultrasound. Ultrasound, yeah. And then he goes to, looks at your chest and sees, oh, yeah. It's the same as it was before. It looks like it was a couple of years ago. He just checks it to make sure it doesn't get worse. Yeah, He's got a video of somebody other than you, and he uses the same video each time. He really doesn't have the machine. Right, just right. Is phone, phone. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff knows about the heart. Here we go. All right. So here, here's your test. Mm -hmm. I want you to start with uh, the last month of the year, and I want you to tell us the name of each month going backwards. Backwards? December, November, yes. October, uh, 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 September, August, uh, 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 ju 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 July, June, uh, May, <laughs> April, uh, March, uh, February, January. He's drunk. Yeah. Arrest him. <laughs> He's good. He's good. Did I do it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But can you do the alphabet backwards? No. There are people that can do that. I don't understand how they do it, but uh, well, the only reason we can do it forwards is because we memorized it in school. Otherwise, we wouldn't right, be able to it, say it by rote. You know. Yeah, it's very difficult to to do it backwards. Well, I can you, start Z, huh? okay, <laughs> X. Oh man, Y, X. Nah. When I was a kid, my dad memorized v it backwards. You, he used to do it really fast. Uh, yeah, um, uh, you know, but don't they do that as a sobriety test? Now, why did you give me that test, Jeff? Is that a, what's that a test of? Well, I, I went to uh, see my doctor mm -hmm. today. Yeah, and that was one of his tests. Really? How yeah. did you do? I was okay. Uh, you know, having a stroke, you you, know, you get a little uh, disadvantage. Yeah, but I always had a figure. There's, there's alternate ways to, to get there from there. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Somehow so, I could do I could do it, but so, I only yeah. missed one month. So if, if, if you haven't had a stroke, you can do it pretty easily, right? Is that Usually, what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Should be able to. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Because I, but, but it's a good... It's a, it's a good... Uh, Let's say a very inexpensive test. Yeah, but what what is it testing though? Your cognitive abilities or something? Or yeah, the way to, the way to how to think 
about an area that you know in a direction that yeah. you normally don't think about. Yeah. It's just yeah. the opposite. So what did you go to your doctor for? Just a yearly checkup or whatever? Yeah. yeah. He wanted to know what month it was. <laughs> I think he knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, so um, um, the um, the blowout from uh, what happened in uh, in Singapore is still, you know, you turn on depending on the channel you watch, it was either a success or a blazing failure, uh, and uh, nobody nobody really seems to agree. Although I yeah. I tend to think that it was a kind of a non-starter you know it just it, it is what it was and uh it was a meet and greet pretty much yeah does kim jong-un play golf i he I, will he, he, yes he will <laughs> <laughs> at the north korea trump uh, trump yeah. golf course <laughs> Miralago North. <laughs> Miralago North. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. You know. Trump said. Oh, well, by the way, I got something. I know. I know what I got. Go ahead. Say what you were going to say there, Jeff. Uh, I just got to get this piece I, of paper. I was saying that that Trump was absolutely uh, com told everybody that it was a very what? big success. What? And a very good success, and the, and the guy from North Korea. Was a very nice person, smart, and very interesting, and oh, he had a wonderful time. Well, you know, well, I, I, it was like his. Do? do you know when the president travels? What are you gonna do you want the guy to give up his nukes? You're going to tell him he's a moron, you know? <laughs> well, here, here. Uh, first of all, uh, um, do you know? Do you know? You, you know that when the president travels in Air Force One, what's in the cargo area? The beast. The beast. Do you know he took Kim Jong Un out to see his car? Hey, yeah, showed him a CD <laughs> player. Action by saying, "Would you buy a used car from uh, this man?" Yeah, right. And, <laughs> you know. Anyway, who is, of, of all the networks, who is the one that Trump trusts the most? Fox, I would assume. Yeah. Fox. Yeah. And who is in his pocket, pretty much? Anybody. Fox. Fox. Well, Fox. Uh, Fox got in the first interview with Donald Trump since he became president. You realize he hasn't yeah. done an, a, a real sit-down interview since he was president. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, since he became uh, POTUS. Uh, and uh, the TV news turf this evening after Fox political anchor asked POTUS about his just wrapped up summit with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Now, Brett Baer, one of the toadies over there at Fox. And Baer called Kim a killer who has executed people. Pretty good at Baer, you know, to call him on that. Trump responds, are you ready? Now, let me remember again, Baer said... He called Kim a killer who has executed people. Trump said, he's a tough guy. When you take over a tough country, tough people, and take over from your father, I don't care who you are, what you are, how much of an advantage you have. Huh? Yep. When, uh, wait, wait, let me finish, talking. let me finish. If you can do that at 27 years old, that's one <laughs> in 10,000 who can do that. He's a very smart guy, a great negotiator, but I think we understand each other. Hey, Bear uh, countered that Kim has done really bad things. Yeah, but so have a lot of other people. That's a whataboutism from our president. Well, uh, he, there was one thing that I thought was kind of striking, and it was kind of said under his breath. Uh, he said, uh, you know, Kim is president for life, and Trump said, not a bad thing. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I could go through a lot of nations where a lot of hold on a second these pages stick together I mean if I bought more expensive paper they wouldn't I don't know. Uh, bad things were done Trump then boasted about the document both men signed nobody thought we were going to have an agreement like that what bullet points He's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, nobody thought he'd come about that little. 
Things were given to me that were not even part of the agreement. I got them after we signed the agreement. What? Three out of the four points that are there that are less than, well, they're only one line each? You know, Trump has a simple way of doing things. He wants his tax code to be uh, one page. Uh, you know, th this is this is what Trump does. You know, he, he likes to. Yeah, he, went, he wants a one paragraph tax code that says, how much money did you make? Take it all. Why, <laughs> why do you need a 40,000 page tax code uh, when it's, uh, you know, I, I mean, they've made these things so complicated. Where did you hear it was 40,000 pages? Well, I think it's even more than that. No, I don't think it is. Uh, well, somebody look it up. I, I got to pee. I'll be back. <laughs> Uh, really? Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you just run people. the catheter over there, Phil? Uh, I, I, I'm done with the catheter. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, uh -oh. it was easier with the catheter. Yeah, why, just, just, hey, are you wearing the diapers right now? Yeah. Well, just pee in your pants while we're talking. Uh, well. I mean, if I, had, if, I, if I ever get the diapers, man, I'm you? peeing wherever I want to. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. No, no, it's a, it's a, no, 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 go, go, go to the bathroom. <laughs> We want to see you do that dog face look. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, that. Uh, did you ever? What, did you ever see the film uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? And <laughs> Martin, Steve Martin, is trying to play a retard, uh, and and he goes, uh, "Pardon me." And he goes, <laughs> "Can I go to the bathroom?" Michael Caine says, "Why, Rupert? Of course you can." And then he just sits there and <laughs> he gives you that look. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's one of my favorite pictures, by the way. Oh, here he is. Boy, that was a quick pee. Wh which movie was that? That's oh, not, yeah. That's not like the old days. No, no. Bam, boom. You know, it's just that uh, I, I raise one leg and squat now. <laughs> <laughs> Like a puppy? <laughs> yeah. No, but what happened was the first time I ever used, uh, like, uh, Flomax... Yeah. I thought I was actually chipping porcelain. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, good flow. Yeah. But you know what I miss as you get older? Remember when you were younger and you got up in the middle of the night and you had to pee and you had a heart on? And now you had to stand there kind of it was a whole scientific principle you had to work out like trajectory yeah, yeah. you know Angles, how far back you know, how like far geometry. back to stand from the toilet. Women don't know this. You know, yeah. but yeah. It, we had, you know, and then, oh, okay, and it arcs just right into the toilet. Yeah. Bob, angles and geometry involved. Yeah. Bob Slayton used to say when he would pee in the dark, yeah. uh, he pee by sound. And yeah. you know, it's true, men pee by sound. I, I don't turn the light on, I just go in. Well, and, I, I've know, tried that, and I've gotten it all over the floor, but the sound <laughs> sounded the same as porcelain. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> Using a catheter every time I have to go, um, I have if I have a heart on, I have to wait until it goes down because the catheter is not long enough to go stop all the way. Bragging. Oh, I stop <laughs> bragging! Stop <laughs> bragging! <laughs> oh, come it's, on, Pat. <laughs> it's a 14 inch catheter. Oh, come on, Pat. Oh, it is. It, it's a 14. It's called a 14 front. You can look it up, and what it is is because your 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 urethra goes up and down, and it, it it's a wave. It isn't a straight shot through, so it has is it to. Be foley? Is it a foley catheter? <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, because what they gave me was a foley catheter. Right. Yeah, foley catheter is, and that's the one that has. The inflatable uh, ball that stays inside your bladder. No, he doesn't. He doesn't hold on. <laughs> That's the one that sound effect guys use. The Foley it's, catheter. It's, <laughs> of, Patrick's of, trying to tell us he's 16 and, inches. Putting <laughs> the hold on just makes it even more difficult because the length just doesn't get to the. Yeah, it, if if you have a hard on, what you're telling us is only a little bit of the catheter is is coming out. Well, yeah, it's only, it's only a little bit is hitting the bladder. Oh, so I see. you got to go all the way back to the bladder. That's why the 16 yeah. inches. I think. So, so uh, you have to insert one all the way to the bladder just to pee? Yes. I pee like 14 times a day. 
fill there are two holes in it. it it's like a um a siphon it, yeah. it's the best way to i mean you put it in and it comes out so it's <laughs> a way for me to do it i mean unless i want to sit and wait and just my pants, but Ke- Kevin's well, thinking about a catheter. On those, on those commer- boy, <laughs> boy, being a being a paraplegic <laughs> well, sounds like a hoot. On TV about the easy catheters. How does that guy do it while he's flying an airplane? <laughs> you, you, can, after, you can do it. You just hang it out the window. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, the, the pilot has uh, what do they call those uh, stewardesses that will do it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's a private plane, and if you're if you're a black guy, you can just. Throw, throw it out the window. <laughs> throw it out the window, yeah. I guess. Well, it must oh, be. It God, sounds, be it, 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 it sounds like know that uh, 15 inches doesn't do it for we'll Pat. Start talking about your dad now, Ray. Stop it. <laughs> wow. Well, folks, we, where, we where else can you turn, hear us? It, it, where, where, where else can you listen to a program where one minute we're talking about South and North Korea and the next minute we're talking about catheters? Well, and we could very soon be talking about catheters in North Korea. So, you know. Do they have them, you think? No. no. They're not 16 inches there either. Uh, yes, no, they're like three yes, Pat, inches. Yes, maximum. Patrick. <laughs> there was one important thing that was answered with that summit is how tall Kim Jong-un is next to uh, Trump. Yeah. Because that, well, he's taller than I thought he was. He was right. wearing elevator shoes. <laughs> no. I mean, he was. He was standing on a box. No, he was wearing uh, like Sammy Davis Jr. shoes. No, but he wasn't. He he's not. He's not <laughs> short. I've noticed that in the past. He's not a really short guy. Trump is six two. Right. So uh, you know, Kim Jong Un had to be approaching five nine, something like that. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so? I that with Pompeo too, because Pompeo is a tall guy as well. And I would just, it, I mean, I had heard it on a number of different. Um, you know who's tall. Is that Comey? He makes uh, oh yeah, he he's, towers above Trump. He's huge. Oh, yeah. He's huge. You know, I got to say something about Trump. This is going to be the only nice thing I have said or will say in the foreseeable <laughs> future. But I noticed him getting off the plane. I think he's lost some weight. I think really? he is, he's supposedly on a diet, and I think it's working. I mean, he's still you know, it's like, well, how does Trump look thin, fat? You know, but uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's still, uh, he has lost weight. Yeah. He cut his hair. No, no. I, I think that's it. it. Yeah, no. His uh, hair gets shorter uh, all the time. Have you noticed that? Yeah, but they can't, they can't do the, stop doing the comb over. Otherwise, you'll see the scar from the scalp reduction. Right. Yeah, and that's, I guess that's why he <laughs> wears it that way. Yeah. Uh, I, I, here's what I often wonder. How long every morning it takes for somebody to do his hair? Because that's that is a a masterful piece of architectural elegance. All right. <laughs> it's gotta be. It's, it's don't, gotta don't be. They a have, don't they have a, a hairdresser for the president? I would they imagine they do. They didn't have to have one for Obama. No. You know, he just he he woke up every morning. His hair looked the same. Okay. That's just a buzz cut. Yeah, but there's got to be an artist that does his hair. Uh, well, artist? Not, I mean, yeah, it, it's got to be. It's exactly the same, and it's it's. And you know something? What he should do is stop doing the sun, uh, the sun be- uh, bed or whatever. Oh, spray paint. Because, because the, yeah, uh, because he, he's, he either that or blind yourself and don't get that like white here. It looks. Come on, who are you trying to fool? You're a yeah. 71-year-old fat fuck, balding. Is that a spray on? Have some dignity. It has to be spray paint. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's spray on. Really? Yeah. yeah it's, it's or or do they shit. just take a bag of Cheetos and upend it on his face? It, that's well, what, maybe that's why he goes to more all the time. He's just getting a lot of sun, but uh, I airbrush. I, it doesn't look like tan. Uh, it looks like spray on. It, it looks like Cheeto dust. Yeah, it's it's airbrush. It's probably just airbrush his yeah. face, you know, and put a little, couple of quarters on his eyeballs and yeah, they, <laughs> little things like swimmers use. He probably uses those coins, puts those on his eyeballs. His, his, cucumbers. Uh, when I go to the spa, they got cucumbers that you can put on your. Uh, oh, on it's, your the, it's the Kim Jong Un coins that he has. 
Yeah. Uh, th those are valuable now. <laughs> they probably got handed out uh, during the conference. Now, the big, news, the, the big news going on today was that, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Cohn, the president's lawyer, or lack of lawyer, I don't know how you want to describe him, was going to be arrested, but I don't think he did. Uh, no. Some people say that they really don't have anything that they can arrest him on. Well, no, there's something. It was supposed to be the New York, uh, New York authorities, that it was something mm -hmm. that he did that was... Uh, Parking tickets? No, it was wrong. He's a fried egg on the griddle. He's about ready to flip. Oh, he will. He will. Because he's a, to begin with, he's a family man. You know, uh, he knows he wouldn't do well in prison. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's uh, just cooking on one side. He's getting ready to flip. Yeah, I think, I think he'll flip. I, I don't think that he's going to sit around and hope that the president will pardon him. Uh, so, I... Uh, it, 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 he he's the guy they want to have flip more than anybody, even over Manafort. Although they got so many things on Manafort, do you know he's wearing two ankle bracelets? Yeah, you said that right. Uh, nice. Maybe yeah. one. What? That's one? So if they cut them in half, they can get, find one half of them out in the the river. Uh, <laughs> no, but why do you they put, can at least find one? Why half. do you put two ankle bracelets on somebody in case one falls off? Uh, you know, they cut them in half. They can find one half. Or was it like two jurisdictions and they both wanted to have a... a, 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 a yeah, there you go. You can stand on the bridge. You can be in Virginia and D.C. at one side, you know? Yeah, something like that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, I think that Cohn, Cohn is, is the man who knows where all the bodies are buried. Because he was the fixer for Trump. And you know? all his lawyers bailed on him today, right? Uh, no, he got rid of them. Well, he may, okay. they, may have bolt, they may have bailed They're on gone. Do you know the that fire. the coin is going for between 65 and $275 well, where did that on come eBay? Where, where did that come from, Phil? I, I was just looking it at it. It was the, on eBay. <laughs> the what is going? The Bitcoin? No, the, uh, the Trump-Kim coin for the summit oh. is going for between 65 and 275 bucks. Well, I would, I, would, I, would, I would bid on it right now, Phil. Yeah, well, yeah. That's a piece You're of history. One, Did you see the pictures of uh, of, 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 uh, of of Trump and Kim Jong Un? They don't look anything like them. Oh, the ones on the coin, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're for for a while, these challenge coins were a uh, a a, um, what a, a thing that a lot of people would get. You know what a challenge coin is? Uh, uh, yeah, the United States currency is a challenge coin. No, no, no. Patrick knows. <laughs> what? Patrick knows what a challenge coin is. What is a challenge is. coin? challenge coin is a coin that you can get from any number of organizations, typically military or fire department, police department, that it, it's a commemorative coin of a specific either action or a group. And um, Do you it, know how they were originally used? Uh, yeah. If, if you did something, you were given... No, no. Given, no. Uh, if you were behind enemy lines uh, and you needed to identify yourself, you use your challenge coin. Uh, it had to do with, uh, I believe, either World War II or World War I. It, was, I, it may have gone back to World War I, uh, where uh, a, a challenge coin was used to identify you if you were behind enemy lines and needed to identify yourself. Or that on the inside of your jacket if you're a pilot. <laughs> But why? Uh, uh, what made you bring that up? Oh, because these were challenge coins that the uh, um, the, uh, the, they're the not uh, summit coins. No, they're not challenge coins. They were memorial coins, but commemorative coins. Yeah, yeah right. but they use it as a challenge. Uh, matter of fact, it even says challenge coin Kim Jong Un. Yeah. What's the uh, challenge? To try and spend name. them somewhere? No, no. I, there, there's a. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll look up the exact. Uh, definition of a challenge coin but it has a very interesting past well so my question uh, is 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 this nobel prize winning time for trump yeah mm -hmm. sure no. <laughs> do you think do you think keep the money uh, you know what's going to happen when he doesn't get nominated don't you and you know how you get nominated do you know how the it's nomination the process fault. huh it's gonna be the democrats fault he didn't get nominated. no no you know how you know how the nomination process goes uh, there is a nominating committee, and anyone who has ever won a Nobel Prize 
can nominate somebody. Oh, it'll be Obama's fault then. Yeah, it would be Obama's fault. Uh, but if he doesn't get nominated, I want to see that tweet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the f- fake award giving, giving yeah. <laughs> uh, antiquated old school award Nobel Prize thing. I'd much rather have Miami. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't get one. Uh, yeah. I, I I just think that they don't want him anywhere near uh, uh, where is it Oslo where they do it yeah yeah, yeah. or Geneva Oslo. no yeah yeah I think it's Oslo it's, Norway if I'm not mistaken yeah. I think um, uh, no of course he should win the uh, Nobel Prize uh, because after Sanction. all what did Nobel invent oh yeah the, the, uh, the bomb. Uh, the explosives. Dynamite. Explosive, yeah. Dynamite, yeah. yeah. The man who created dynamite started the Nobel Peace Prize because he realized what he had wrought. Now, Hercules, the town, the city of Hercules is uh, is where they had the Hercules uh, Dynamite Company. And uh, did... Well, you come out with facts that, you know, just... <laughs> right, just... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, your brain just farts like crazy. The Hercules yeah. Dynamite Company. Yeah, but I, I what, what did that have to do with the beginning of, uh, I, I thought that's where they got the, the beginning of that stuff, dynamite. No, dynamite was invented by uh, Alfred Nobel. Oh, okay. Yeah. And did he have anything? No, he wouldn't have had anything to do with Hercules because he was in... No, Oz- because he was in uh, was Norway. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Pat, well, well, let's see, Patrick Ben Ray. Um, this is totally off, off the... When you said uh, Bill Brain farts all sorts of shit, just reminded me, I had a dentist appointment today, and my uh, hygienist, who is a very, very attractive young lady, accidentally bounced while she was uh, cleaning my teeth, and that that was the greatest thing well, in the she world. Accidentally, she accidentally, wait a minute, be a little more specific, she accidentally bounced what? Belched. Oh, belched. Belch. Oh, belch. Yeah. I thought you said bounced. With, I thought she with, threw her tit in your face or something. Her jugs. No, no, mm-hmm. I, 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 was, I was so impressed with that, that she was so comfortable with me that she let out a belch, and I don't, oh, that's great, so... Sorry, you just reminded me of that when you said. Well, you, you know, you know when you know your marriage is really settled is when she farts in bed and doesn't say excuse me. You oh know. yeah, oh yeah. I, I had a friend that used to date some of the most beautiful women, and he would break up with them within about two weeks of starting to date them. And I'd ask him, why? Why do you just dump them when you know you're in the honeymoon period? And he says, well, I, you know. This is the first two weeks. Nobody farts in front of each other, and uh, you know he says that uh, it's the best part of the relationship. So he says women are like streetcars. If uh, you you know one comes by, you get rid of them, and and then you get another. So uh, what an asshole! Yeah, well. what an asshole! <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no respect for women. I mean, I gotta challenge coin here but i don't have the not, uh, i, I the found that in my life uh, women weren't like uh, like a, a a bus or whatever you said a streetcar street they were car, more yeah. like they were more like siamese cats open the door and they're gone uh <laughs> that's what i found you know, yeah. Tr- trump just got nominated uh, a couple hours ago by two norwegian lawmakers for the nobel peace prize really yeah mm-hmm. yeah there you go. At least he got nominated. Now I can shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of other people in front of him. You know who I would, I would give it to? Uh, uh, what's his name? The basketball Rodman. player. Um, Rodman. Rodman. Rod, Rodman. Dennis Rodman. I give it to Dennis Rodman. <laughs> well, he started the whole, let's face it. Let's be honest. He started the whole ball rolling, didn't he? Yeah, pretty much. Huh? That would be hilarious if Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Did you see that documentary that uh, he did? On uh, on the on the trip, yeah. Or is crying? No, no, no. no, no this no. is oh. uh, prior uh, when he uh, first went over to North Korea. I saw I saw a documentary. It might have been on Netflix. Kevin sent me the link to him crying on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> was oh, he I, lost? In a way, I felt 
I felt kind of sorry for him because in retrospect, I mean, let's be honest about this. When he came back, everybody was joking, oh, Rodman, he's hanging out with a dictator. Yeah, what an idiot. What a fucking moron. But now, in retrospect, how big a moron is he? He I mean, he started the whole ball rolling. I thought that's you what, thought that's what I was telling you about because I re- I saw that interview live and I looked at him and and he started these th- you know CNN was asking him these questions and I'm going you know and he started bawling and I'm going you know this guy is they shit all over him he's and, sensitive you know he was he started crying and shit and I'm going you know they did shit all over hey, him if you don't want but then, your- you know after a while you think about you know he's probably looking for the spotlight and everything else and you know. You take two grains of salt with it, but he, he yeah, did. But I'll tell you he something. I'll tell you over something. there, and he yeah. did break the ice. I'll tell you something about Rodman. Uh, you know, you can't be very sensitive when, by your own desires, you look like you fell face down in a tackle box. Yeah, yeah he was banging <laughs> Carmen yeah. Electra. You That's know, right. yeah. you know, weren't they married? It, 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 yeah, I think so. Everybody yeah. looks at him and goes, "Okay, this guy's yes, nuts." Pat, Patrick's got his hand up. The very hand he puts a catheter in with. Ugh. Hey, Patrick. Go ahead, Pat. Um, yeah, I, I and I was one of them that made fun of him when he went over a couple of years ago. And I said the other night, um, I, I would miss, you know, maybe I was wrong about the whole thing. Because really, yeah, he did. And I don't think he intended to get the ball rolling, mm-hmm. but I think... He did, and I heard some pundit last night, I don't remember what what station it was on, um, and they said, you know, the, the difference between um, Kim Jong-un and his father and grandfather is the two older gentlemen did not give a shit about Western culture or uh pop culture or anything like that right whereas kim always has i mean he was educated in switzerland he had been exposed to the western ways and rodman really all by himself tackle box face tattoos basketball um fame and all of that encompasses everything that makes him curious and they even said trump himself it probably a curiosity for Kim as well because you know he, this is a Western leader, and so you know the big difference is being a younger man versus the two older men. He's more interested in. What yeah, it's a very current, interesting point you bring up. I mean, he is he a far, his game. He, he is played a, his but game. He's also yeah. He's a far more contemporary person than even Trump is be honest with you yeah. did you see when rodman first yeah. went there there was a photograph of rodman and kim jong-un sitting uh watching a sporting event and one of the generals the caption was i don't think this is obama <laughs> yeah well and when he was a kid i mean that's what when they showed him you know the if you see the background to kim jong-un when he was a uh, what is his name park or whatever his name was when he was a kid he had all the the, the the jerseys and the tennies and all that crap when he was a kid, and now Rodman goes over there and he's bringing them tennies and jerseys and showing them basketball. And, and you got to remember, you got to remember. And then that. yeah, and then you got Trump going over there and saying, you know, you could have a basketball team over here and you could, you know, do all this. And and he's and, and he's losing them I, the right I, way. And I got to tell you, I, I, I got to tell you, you have to uh, uh, you have to consider. That at uh, well, 36 now, something like 26 when he was when he became took over in North Korea, that he was only a few years removed from college, and the colleges yeah, he kid. went to, he was listening probably to contemporary music. He was probably wearing exactly. contemporary clothes. The only thing was when he became the head of the country, he suddenly had to wear that militaristic outfit to look like the supreme leader because that's what people expected. Well, it helped him kill people while, you know, if... Uh, exactly. You know, oh, no, but he's a very he talented the, he man, that, and, and he's front. very he's a very tough man because there are very tough people in Korea. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck <laughs> me. I can't believe this moron we elected president of the United States. Help you me. 
didn't See, he could have he could have gotten around all that shit, and not said all that shit, and still done the same thing. I believe. Yeah. You know, yes. I just did. Right. You hear Trump give that little speech? I think he was exhausted because at the end of it, he said, "Well, maybe I didn't do the right thing, and uh, in a few years we'll find that out." But I won't admit it anyway. So what's yeah. the difference? That was a joke. And oh, it was, it's always a joke. Uh, no, uh, no, no I joke. agree with Phil that that was a, that joke, was a man, Trump man. joke. And it was actually it, funny. It was a combination. It was a combination was of, of, of of it was self deprecating. It was right. funny, but it was true. It's true. That's, <laughs> That's the problem. Self deprecating are true. Yeah, I think Jeff's you falling. Know, um, I think Rodman Jeff's. I think Jeff, hey, there. Jeff's falling asleep. I think. Oh yeah, he is. This yeah. must be an exciting show tonight. Oh, oh hi, yeah. Jeff. Uh, <laughs> we hey, uh, Rodman's been going there since 2013. You realize that? Yeah, he's just, he went back several yeah, times. Food. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I mean, uh, Rodman was given a bad time for the, well, for some of the same reasons that Trump was, uh, but he's not a world leader, and that was that because of the human rights violations on the part of Kim to be pals with somebody like that. But you know, I mean, in retrospect. Uh, this whole summit might not have been possible if Rodman hadn't kind of, you know, tested yeah. the waters. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about him saying uh, about Warbanger, about him, giving him all the credit? Who? About or Otto. Otto, he, Otto didn't do shit except uh, well, that, steal that's a poster. What he was saying that it wasn't be possible without Otto. I, I don't know. Otto about didn't that. do I shit. Otto stole something. Otto stole something, and in those cultures. Uh, it was a no-no, and he I'm got thrown sorry. in jail, and he got treated like shit, the and he died. Punishment sh should fit the crime, and stealing a poster isn't worth dying. Isn't, isn't no, a I agree with that. And, agree and we all that. agree with that. What I'm saying is, what did he do to advance the relations between the two countries? Nothing. Right. I think it embarrassed uh, North Korea to the point where they did such a, 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 a hit job on this guy that it killed him. And that uh, I think that it weakened their position, and you know they, they maybe it just opened up. I th do you really think, Phil, that Kim Jong Un gives a good diddly shit about the perceptions of the world about his country? He kept lighting yeah, rockets. Yes, Patrick. Rockets. Patrick. I, I I do agree with Phil in some respect. Uh, I I think with everything that was starting to culminate to a possible summit and that with Otto death, it did put Kim in a bad light and with Rodman having been going over there for, you know, for so long and the possibility that, you know, we don't know what Rodman said. Rodman may have even indicated to Kim, you know, if you chill the fuck out a little bit, maybe you know, something can happen. Well, I, so, I do know that it, it, one of the things he did is he gave him a copy of the Art of the Deal and said you should get to know who our president is. That yeah. is one thing that and he, he did. And he hadn't been over there since Otto had, yeah. had been uh, been released, though, had he? No. I don't think he'd been over there since. I don't think so. No. no maybe, that, maybe that's another thing. and Maybe Kim, and I know this sounds bizarre, but if, if Kim really felt that Rodman and he were friends and Otto died, maybe he was thinking, well, Rodman's not coming over because we really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I could have been I, too. And I mean that seriously as well as tongue in cheek because if yeah. you just really, he's a kid who is enamored with Western stuff and this friend of his. That Rodman, yeah. he doesn't want to lose that. Hey, listen, we gotta go. We can only hope. Thanks oh. to thanks to Ray Renati. Oh, well, you can always call Jack. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much. Very good stuff tonight. Same with you, Jeff. Phil, argumentative as always, and misinformed, but I I I love you anyway. Uh, and 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 Kevin, thank you so much. Why didn't everybody give a big wave goodbye? And we'll uh, we'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow night. Bye bye. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the esteemed citizens panel. Let me get rid of them here. Uh, I have to clear out the line so the next show can use them. 
Uh, and uh, I'll see you again, uh, let's see, tomorrow night after uh, after we have the, uh, the uh, exchange with Damian Chaplin at 9.30. Uh, Jack and Amy are next. Uh, and uh, then after that, at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, it's Connections. And, or conniptions, as I like to call it now and then. Uh, we'll see you again uh, tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.